So I used to believe that getting good at selling was something that you were either born with, that it was this naturally gifted talent that you had, and some people just knew how to do it, or it was something that only extroverts could do really well. And I'm like, but what about the rest of us? What about the rest of us that are like, I'm not a naturally gifted salesperson. I have never taken a formal sales training course in my life, and I'm extremely introverted. And that's when I learned about the 10,000 hour rule. And I know for so many of us as designers and as creatives, we know that we need to get good at selling our work. We know that bridging the gap between the work we want to create and making money in our business requires us to learn how to sell. And on top of that, so many of us are like, I'm just not naturally gifted at this. Or even if you are good at selling, maybe you're extremely extroverted, you might even fall into the category of feeling Feeling like sales has such a negative connotation to it. And we've all had those experiences, right? Whether you've walked into an electronic shop, whether you've walked onto a car dealership, whether you've interacted with a specific kind of real estate agent, like we've all had those experiences where we kind of have been left with a bad taste in our mouth. And then we bring those assumptions and those ideas to our business and go, but I don't want to be pushy. I don't want to be the kind of person that's like trying to convince my clients to buy something that they don't want. And it wasn't until I learned a better way to sell that I was like, okay, I totally get this. This is something that everybody can learn how to do. And this isn't one of those instances where you need to go out there and get some formal certification or credential to become really good at selling, specifically as a florist, because we have such an incredible strategic advantage. Your customers already know that they want flowers. Your customers have come to you because they see you as the expert, they see you as the business that's going to help them solve their problem. So we don't have to convince them. We have such an incredible advantage over so many other industries because we're not convincing people to buy makeup. We're not convincing people that it's time to upgrade their car. We're not convincing somebody that they should update their phone. They have come to you with a very clear problem. So our only job is to make it easy for them to find the right solution for them. So that means we get to approach selling in a totally different way way. It doesn't matter whether you're extroverted or introverted. It doesn't matter whether you love having conversations with clients. It doesn't matter whether you've been in business for a year or you've bought a business that's been around for 20 years. And selling started to become so much simpler in my business when I started looking for an easier way. And when I discovered the concept of the 10,000 hour rule, it really started to open my mind to think about things in such a different perspective. Because you can apply the 10,000 hour rule to any area of your business business. I mean, you can apply to any area of your life, but the general premise is that it takes around 10,000 hours to become really good at something. And the reason I actually love this concept is because it makes you remember that everything is learnable. Getting good at selling is simply a skill to practice. But in addition to that, things really started to fall into place when I realized, wait a minute, like we don't have to be here convincing our clients to spend money on their wedding flowers. We don't have to be here convincing anybody that having a funeral sheaf to celebrate a life is a great gesture. We don't have to convince anybody that sending flowers when somebody's just had their first grandbaby is a genius idea. They already know that. Like your customers and your clients already know that flowers make a great addition to a wedding, add on to a funeral, celebration of life, or a nice touch in a reception or in a workspace. Your clients already know that. So any of the convincing and energy that you bring to the table just doesn't need to happen. So we can drop that experience and drop that scenario where it just like doesn't feel good. Trying to convince somebody doesn't <laughs> feel good. It is so out of alignment with your passion and your creativity and your mission and your drive and your want and your desire to spread joy with the world that it's like, ew, this is what feels so gross. So when you can learn to drop the convincing energy, then you can move into creating a structure where selling feels easy easy, even if you're an introvert. And one of the questions that I love digging into as a creative entrepreneur is what would it look like if it was easy? And this question has broken my brain open 
in so many instances, but particularly when it comes to selling. Because when I sat down and figured out, okay, for Kathleen, what would this look like if it was easy? Three things came to mind. One, copy and paste. When you run a business and you're a creative, you are confronted with a hundred decisions every single day day. Plus, you're also a human being. So all of the overwhelm and decision fatigue is compounded. So anytime I can come up with a copy and paste solution, I'm going to be like, yep, I'm totally in. So selling would feel really easy to me if it was copy and paste. It's also really important to me and to my clients that it's really empowering. So I want my clients to be able to feel like they can trust the information that we're providing and that they know they get to make the best decision for them. Essentially, it's like the exact opposite of trying to convince somebody. It's like, here's the information that you need to make a really informed and empowered decision. Circle back when you're ready and let's get to work. And then number three is that sales can happen 24-7. And especially these days because your clients and your customers may not live in your local area. Your clients and your customers, if they're getting married, they're going to be planning their wedding flowers at all sorts of not normal normal business hours. They're going to be sitting on the sofa at 11 o'clock on a Monday night trying to find answers to their questions. They don't want to wait till you open or you get back to them in an email on Tuesday morning. And if somebody wants to gift flowers, then they want to be able to order them 24-7. So the ability to bring sales into your business 24 hours a day is an absolute strategic advantage. And for me, it's one of those things that's like, okay, this is exactly what I want to happen. So I want it to be copy and paste so that I can conserve my creative energy for the big impact decisions in my business, i.e. designs. I want the process to be super empowering for me and my clients, and I want it to be something that can run 24-7. So when I put all three of these pieces together, I realized, okay, this is when I need to have my website doing the heavy lifting in my business. So even with a retail space, having a website that can bring orders in 24-7, having a website that's really empowering, gives your clients, your brides, people looking to sign up to workshops or floral subscriptions, the information they need to make the best decision for them. And it makes it super copy and paste. Because even the content that you have on your website, you can repurpose on your social media content, but you can also use it when you're training your staff. So that same process, that same questions that are asked at the checkout, the same product and price points that you have on your website can be the same products that you offer in your shop. It can all be so simple and so streamlined so that everything gets to be so much easier. And that was one of the turning points in my business and realizing, oh, wait a minute, like, wait a minute. We as floral designers, we get to play such a different sales game because it can be copy and paste. It can be super empowering for you and your client and you can have sales coming in 24 seven. So making the decision to have your website as the heart of your business, making the decision to have your website doing the selling and marketing for you actually means that you don't have to invest 10,000 hours just to get good at selling. Because the minute you get that structure in place, then your customers can show up and you can lead them to help make the best decision for them. And it gives you that ultimate experience of being able to wake up in the morning to new online orders, new client inquiries. And so much of the admin work has already been done for you so that you can free up your time and energy to be able to create the work that you want to create, to be able to feel that joy and that passion and that experience and share your work with the world. So it's literally like flipping the entire experience on its head. And there are three super common mistakes that I see florists make in their business. And I will tell you from personal experience, I made these mistakes. You guys already know I am the queen of making mistakes when it comes to learning how to make money as a florist. And I was like, oh yes, this is another one of those instances where let's talk about the three biggest mistakes that Kathleen made in her business that are also so common within our industry. And let's go through it. Let's debunk it. Let's unpack it. But most importantly, I want to talk you through exactly what to do so that you can get to that experience of waking up to new online orders, new client inquiries, being able to spend more time designing, less time on admin and making more money in your business. And the first mistake is overlooking the need to have your clients go through through the no like trust cycle. So the no like trust cycle is a very fundamental rooted 
in customer behavior marketing strategy. And your clients need to go through three very distinct decisions, three very distinct phases before they'll actually give you money. So they need to know about you, they need to like your vibe, and they need to trust that you're going to deliver. So even though our clients already know that they're looking for flowers to solve the problem, they're still actually going to move through all three of those phases. When it comes to knowing about you, that's simply about you making sure that you're marketing your business in the places that your clients are actively looking for a florist. And when it comes to the likability factor, put the three second test to work. Look at your website, look at your social media content, look at where you're marketing your services and go, okay, within three seconds, am I building an emotional connection with my clients? Is it clear where we're based and who we work with? And is the vibe in a line with the work you want to put out in the world? And then after that, it's about building trust. And there's two big pieces of the puzzle here. So the first one is, is your messaging in line with what your customer are after? Is your messaging and communication addressing your clients? needs. And the second piece of the puzzle of building trust is, is there a personal relationship that you're building with your clients? And I absolutely made the mistake and made the assumption that because our customers already know that they're looking for a florist and that flowers are the solution, that these transactions should be simple. But it's missing like the fundamental principle of how humans buy stuff. Because even in its simplest form, if you think about standing in like a 7-Eleven or let's pretend you're standing in front of a vending machine, Machine. You've already made the decision that you're going to buy something, but you haven't yet made the decision about what you're going to buy. So you've found the vending machine and you're now having a look through all the different products in the vending machine. So that's the no factor. You're actually looking at the products to be like, okay, is there anything here that I want? Are any of these things going to appeal to whatever it is that you're after? And then in addition to that, you're also, whether it's consciously or unconsciously, you're evaluating the vending machine's ability to actually deliver deliver on what you think it's going to deliver. Does it look like if you put the money in, something's actually going to come out the bottom? Does it look like the product might still be fresh? Does it look like the machine's going to do what you think the machine's going to do? And that, my friends, is simply just the decision around a vending machine. But that's exactly what humans do. That's like a little microcosm in terms of understanding buyer behavior. So even though your client might have shown up and been like, I want to send flowers to my bestie in Atlanta, Georgia, they're still going through exactly the same thought process. So they need to know about you, they need to like you, and they need to trust you. And particularly when the goal is getting orders and getting new inquiries 24-7, when the goal is making it copy and paste, when the goal is allowing your clients to make a really empowered decision, really thinking through the content and the layout of your website matters so much because you do need to make sure that you are checking all three boxes. So when it comes to really dialing in your website, here's what I want you to do. I want you to answer these three questions. When it comes to knowing about you, are you actively prioritizing and marketing your business in the places that your customers are actively looking for a florist? And the key word there is actively, because again, you don't need to convince your customers that flowers are a good idea. They've already made that decision. Now they're on the hunt for a florist in the right area. So once you come to the conclusion of, yes, I am actively marking my business in the right places, so that my ideal client can know about me, then you can move on to the likability factor. Are you aligning your brand and your vibe to showcase how awesome you are, to showcase the work that you wanna put out into the world and to showcase the quality and the expertise of what you offer? And this is really about bridging the gap between your customers knowing about you and then your customers getting to the point where they're gonna start the checkout or the inquiry process. And it's all about building that relationship. So really focusing on making sure that you are an integral part of that story, really making sure that you're leading with professionalism and quality and expertise, and making sure that everything feels very much in alignment with the vibe or the brand that you want to put out into the world. And then number three, when it comes to sealing the deal and building trust, does your content and messaging align with what matters most to your clients? And this is one of those pieces where I will say I completely missed the mark because I was so focused on my own imposter syndrome and insecurities, but it's so 
easy to actually build trust with your clients because while everyone else is keeping everything so secretive within our industry, your customers get to land on your website and go, oh my gosh, these guys are making it so easy. They totally get my needs. They totally understand where my struggle and overwhelm and hesitation and uncertainty are about. I totally trust them. How do I pay? And that really is about aligning your messaging, but it's also about making sure that you as the creative director, you as the co-founder, you as the person in charge, you as the creator in your business, that the human beings play an integral role in how you present your business. And I stayed hidden in my business for so long because I was so scared of getting called out for being an imposter. But this is also the thing that separates you from the relay services and wire networks. Because if you're a real life human being, and I'm going to assume that you are because you're watching this, just gonna take a wild guess. Just be really honest with yourself. Are you showing up as the face in your business or are you hiding? And yeah, it can feel scary and all the fear and the doubt comes up, but I promise you <laughs> that one thing can make such a dramatic difference in your business and it will make it so much easier to close the sale and to create more orders and get more inquiries in your business when you have the courage to actually show up in your business. And when you can align and nail those three things, you will see a dramatic increase in your revenue. You will see sales coming in 24 seven, and you will have created so much more space in your business so that you can get back to doing the work that you wanna be doing and not spending so much time feeling like you need to convince your customers or working on admin or rinsing and repeating the same things day after day after day. So nail those three things and make sure your website is doing the heavy lifting in the selling strategy of your business. Mistake number two, being cheap. And we all do it. It's a totally normal human experience to be afraid to put high priced products on our website. It's a totally normal human experience to hesitate when it comes to talking about budgets and talking about pricing and talking about money with your client. But this is one of those places where you can so quickly separate yourself from the competition by creating scripts, by creating content, and by really pitching yourself at the level and the quality of work you want to be asked to create. And so much of our hesitation of putting premium priced products on our website is because we've convinced ourselves that our customers don't want to spend money. But here's the coaching question for the week. How do you know? How much proof and how much data do you have that your customers don't want to spend money. And you will never know until you try. And if you actually went out and started to actively promote premium price products on your social media content, on your website, you are going to start to receive more premium priced orders. Fascinating how that whole thing happens. When we take complete control over the sales process and when we get really clear on the kind of work we want to create and then we go out there and make it easy for our customers to buy, it's like a miracle that all of a sudden those are the orders that start coming in. But this is one of the reasons I'm such a huge advocate for having your website doing your selling for you because this is what made things feel so much more fun for me because when you finally realize that you've attached your self-worth to the price and when you learn to kind of get out of your own way and go wait a minute my website doesn't have a human brain my website isn't standing here going like let's be all judgmental and skeptical about how much our customers are going to want to spend on money it's like here's a beautiful thing and a price tag associated with it click here if you want to buy it so much simpler and it's so much easier and I refer to to this concept is selling from a clean space because you've cleaned up your insecurities, self-doubt, and uncertainty. You're not adding on layers of judgment or assumptions about how much your customers are willing to spend and you just get to show up with the facts because your website doesn't have a human brain. So you can look at your offers and look at the products in your online catalog and go, am I leading from a place of scarcity? Am I making the assumption that my customers don't want to spend that much money? What's causing me to hesitate putting a really big fatty price point in one of my products? Because your website is simply just going to show up and be like, hey, here's a beautiful beautiful, amazing $400 arrangement. You want to buy it? Oh, and you want to add chocolates and a candle to that experience? Oh, and maybe you actually want to upgrade? Yes, absolutely. No problem. $600? Beautiful. So here's what I want you to do. If you know you are in the way from being able to create those beautiful designs that you want to create, I want you to ask yourself and get curious. Right now, what do you currently believe is the upper limit that your customers would be willing to spend on a 
design and get crystal clear on what that upper limit was. And full transparency, I will tell you that at one point in my business, I thought $100 was the upper limit. I couldn't wrap my head around a customer actually wanting to pay me more than $100 to design a bouquet. But once I started to see that, once I could pinpoint that that was my upper limit, then I could question it and I could start to play around with the idea of what if it's not true? What if that's simply a number that I have decided is an upper limit and I'm not even allowing myself to go past it? So your homework and your challenge, should you choose to accept it, is identify what your current upper limit is, whether that's 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 400, 500. Figure out what that number is for you and then I want you to double it and then I want you to create one product on your website that has that price point. So if you know right now your upper limit is $200, then what you're going to do is create a $400 product, get it up on your website, and then go out and promote it on social media and allow for all of the discomfort, all of the, oh my gosh, my stomach just tied into knots. I can't believe that I'm actually going to do this. Because remember, what's the worst thing that could happen? Nobody buys it. Well, I'm going to guess right now nobody's buying a $400 product from you anyway. So you've already experienced that. So you're already experiencing the worst case scenario. You might as well go to the point where you give yourself an opportunity to succeed. So figure out what your current upper limit is, double it, create a product on your website, and then go out there and invite people in to order it. And then number three, let's talk about the idea that success leaves clues, particularly when it comes to making money in your business. And every single one of my clients has been through this experience where you've poured time and energy into getting your online catalog sorted, or you've invested in that one photo shoot, and you're like, okay, I've done the work. I've got my website sorted. I feel like I'm moving in the right direction. Everything should be unfolding perfectly. So then you start refreshing your orders. You start refreshing your email. You start refreshing your Stripe account. Three hours goes by, and then you wake up the next day and you do the same thing. And then three days goes by and you're like, I'm a complete failure. Nobody wants to buy from me. I don't have what it takes to make this work. I mean, I am 100% also speaking from personal experience because that's totally me. But I'll be the first to tell you that inner narrative is a pile of garbage because no florist has ever <laughs> hit the path to success overnight. And if that's you, if you're like, Kathleen, I feel like I'm banging my head against the wall. I feel like I've checked the boxes. I've got all the things. I've done the photo shoots. I'm posting to social media. I've got my Google ads running. My online catalog is working, but I want more. Okay, here is your task. This is what I want you to do. Be honest with yourself and ask yourself, are you sitting down and tracking your data? Now, I know for sure this is one of the most seemingly unsexy experiences that you might think about in your business because you're like, I just want to be behind my workbench. I just want to be designing and playing with flowers. Okay, right. That's great. That's why you have a business. It's why you're a creative and a designer. But in order to get there, having the structure and the systems in place so that the sales come in consistently is your fast track to success. And that's where you sitting down and looking at your data is an absolute must. And this concept of success leads clues. And if you've ever taken a course where they've ever talked about like leading indicators and lagging indicators, or you've ever listened to a podcast or read a book around that concept of leading indicators and lagging indicators, this is one of those scenarios because the sales don't happen instantly. The revenue doesn't happen instantly, but there are so many leading indicators that are going to show you you are absolutely on the right track. Particularly when it comes to winning the digital marketing game as a florist, this is going to be your secret weapon. And it's going to be your secret weapon for two reasons. Because one, on your website, learning to track your data is going to show you where your customers are going, how they're behaving on your website, and where you can run your next experiment. But it's also going to give you the mindset boost that you need because it's so easy and so totally normal and a completely natural human experience to fill the void, to fill the lack of orders, the lack of revenue, the lack of results with some sort of negative narrative. That's your human brain. It's how it's programmed to operate. And if you're anything like me, it's going to end up with some version of you're not good enough. You should totally give up hope. Instead, we're going to shift the narrative and we're going to actually fill the void with progress because this is a long-term game. We're 
running a marathon here. This is not something that's going to completely change by Monday. But when you sit down and you build the habit of tracking your data, when you have a day with data and you do it every single week, you're going to see how much progress you are making. So some things to look for are traffic to your website, total volume, total users, total visitors to your website in a specific period of time. One other piece of data related to that that I find really helpful to look at is the number of new visitors versus repeat visitors. And you'll know you're on the right track when you have more new visitors versus repeat visitors to your website, because it means you're getting more exposure, more eyeballs, more potential customers to your business. The third thing I really like looking at is the length of time. So how much time on average is a user spending on your website? And if you're at all skeptical when you look at some of those numbers, you're like, that seems really low. Pause and set a timer and just sit there and count the time of the average time that people are spending on your website because 30 seconds is a long time. A minute is a long time. 15 seconds is a long time. If you actually sit there and think about how much time your average user is spending on your website, it actually is helping you move in the right direction. The next one to look at is average number of pages that your users are visiting. And in many cases, they're actually going to be jumping around like three or four different pages on your website. And that's really helpful for you to know because because it confirms the fact that, hey, wait a minute, people don't just go on my homepage and then immediately skip to the first product and then go to the checkout page. They also don't go to my homepage and then immediately jump to my wedding inquiry page. They're like consuming a huge amount of content on your website and that's a really good sign. And then number five, how many products are your customers looking through before they make a purchase? This one always surprises me because I kind of assumed, well, people are just gonna show up, they're gonna know exactly what they want and then they're gonna click buy. When ironically, sometimes they're looking at three products, sometimes they're looking at 12 products. So that whole experience, right? That whole example of somebody standing in front of the vending machine, that's exactly what your customers are doing. And when you start to track this information, when you start to look at it and peel back the layers, you're going to see that you are making progress and your success is inevitable because you're just tracking and you're following the clues. And this one habit makes running an online florist business so much more fun because this is when you get to gamify everything and you get to evaluate your results this week as as compared to last week, as compared to what you were doing 52 weeks ago, 52 weeks before that, or even five years ago. And you're going to see how much progress you actually are making in your business because you get to keep score with yourself. You get to focus on the gain rather than obsess over the gap and you get to celebrate every single win in your business. And those data points that you track during your date with data are going to be your leading indicators because your sales and your revenue is actually simply a lagging indicator of everything that you're doing in your marketing and the way that you're setting up your website. So go out there, put the work in to make sure that your website is bringing in the bulk of the revenue that's doing the heavy lifting and is the focus of your marketing in your business. Make sure you optimize for the no like trust experience and get out of your own way when it comes to attracting higher value clients and getting higher value online orders. And remember to sit down and track your data because success leaves clues. And as always, thank you so much for being here. I hope that this has been helpful. Go out there, make some money, spread some joy with the world, have the most amazing week, and I will talk to you again next week. Bye for now.